Hello, Gwos. Uh, if you want to study in Poland, which is uh, one of the countries in uh, Eastern Europe, then I think one of the scholarship you want to come out about is to, uh, I mean, apply for the Banach Scholarship Program. Uh, I think uh, this particular website is actually the official website for the application of the Banach Scholarship Program to study in Poland. Uh, on this uh, website, you actually can find the eligible countries or citizens who can apply for this particular uh, Banach Scholarship Program. So uh, this website actually has all the, I mean, important information which you can read to get more uh, idea about how to apply for the Banach Scholarship Program. But then in this video, I will give you a practical guideline uh, how to apply for the Banach Scholarship Program. And I'm going to explain the document that are required in applying for the scholarship program. So, I mean, uh, these are the eligible citizens or countries. You can see Albania, India, Argentina, Brazil, Tunisia, South Africa, and all the other countries you can find uh, uh, them here. Okay. Now, uh, what you need to do when you come to this website, probably, it's uh, looking at the information for applicants. This uh, many here is very important because it gives you more ideas as to what to do in the application process. So, I mean, on this uh, side of the website, you can actually see the deadline for the application of the, the Professor Stefan Banach program or scholarship. So, uh, I mean, the call for application opened on 28 February and it's going to end on 31st March, 2023. So you have to keep track of this, uh, I mean, deadlines. I mean, uh, depending on the year you want to apply for the scholarship program. Okay, so now uh, we can actually uh, go back and then, I mean, get more information uh, here. So on the same website, Right, you can see for the call, the call for proposals, uh, we just saw the information for applicants. We can also, uh, I mean, go to the documents you need when you're applying for the, the scholarship. So here, you can actually see the list of recognized English language certificates uh, for the application. You can see the model certificate. Now this model certificate actually is important for uh, those students who are in their final year of study who have not actually completed their, their program of study but they want to apply for the scholarship, uh, you actually need uh, a model certificate. And you can look at this model certificate, uh, uh, I mean, information how your university can actually build this uh, model certificate, you know, for you as a student who is in your final year of study. Uh, because if you're in your final year of study, study you don't actually have uh, a certificate yet. So the university can give you a model certificate to apply for the Stephen Banak scholarship program. So you can get uh, the model certificate, how your university can build the model certificate for you. Your model certificate actually must have, a, I mean, a cumulative average grade from your studies. So. Uh, you have all the information here needed to get the model certificate when you are in your final year of study and you have not completed your university uh, education. Okay, so um, we have that. Now you can also check for a list of recognized English language certificates required for the application of the Stephen Banach uh, uh, scholarship program. You can see them in the 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 call for the call document section of it. So everything is clearly uh, stated and you can see that in here. Okay. So um, if you come back and then you go to uh, the Banak scholarship program again, then you can easily scroll down and then uh, you can go to uh, call for proposals or you can go to information for applicants. Okay, so when you go to information for applicants, you can easily go back and then uh, we can go to um, call for proposals. 
Okay. So here you can easily find most important information about this scholarship program. Uh, now you can see what the objective of the program is about, and you can easily see the various uh, deadline for submitting your application. Uh, the deadline for submitting the application is 31st of March, 2023, and the time is indicated there. If you want to submit your application, then uh, actually it should be done only in the electronic form in the agency ICT system. And then you can easily click on the fill in the application to start your application process. Okay, now the language of application uh, in terms of your study program can either be in Polish or in English. So you look at the, the, the various uh, programs, whether that program is being taught uh, in English or in Polish, then you choose those programs. And then don't forget that you can only apply once. It is it's a very uh, important instruction because if you apply twice, you might cause some kind of interference within your application system and that, that can lead to your disqualification. So it's very important and advisable to submit one application. Okay. Now, uh, you can also look at the thematic scope of activities implemented under, under the program. I can, I, I mean, it's easy to understand this. Okay, so you can scroll down and get more information like uh, eligibility criteria. Uh, the eligibility criteria depends on where you're coming from and the various countries that are eligible to apply. You can see those countries uh, listed in here, Kenya, Tanzania, Tunisia, Ukraine, Vietnam, Brazil, all the countries have been stated here. So if you're among these countries, then you are eligible to apply for the, the, the Banat Scholarship Program. Okay, so now during the application process, which I'm going to, which, which I'll show you uh, uh, quickly, uh, I mean, you'll be able to uh, submit uh, a confirmation of your English proficiency, okay? So uh, in terms of the procedure for the assessment and selection of the application, you should put much work, I mean, on some of the documents that are required to be submitted, okay? Because those documents are going to be scrutinized and uh, your selection will actually based on those documents. Okay, so the list of required documents, one is your scan valid passport and you, the passport must actually show your personal data. It is very important that you only scan the area of your passport that has your, your picture, okay? That side of, of the passport must be scanned clearly and then you upload them. Okay, now here, you also have a scan of your diploma certificate or your bachelor degree certificate. <clears throat> your transcript of records must also be, uh, be, be, be scanned as well. Now, uh, for those of you who, didn't, who actually have not completed university, as I mentioned, you have to take good notice of the modest certificate that is attached to uh, this particular uh, website in the announcement section. That is for those who actually do not have certificate or transcript, you know, you should get more information here. Okay, so proving your English language certificate or English language proficiency, I mean, certificate is very important. Also, you have to submit a recommendation letter. Okay, a recommendation letter uh, could be from your institution of study or a non-governmental organization. Okay, so this area actually describes the, the evaluation criteria. Okay, it will be based on your recommendation by a diplomatic or consular mission, non governmental organization, or your university. So you can take recommendation letter from the university. And then if you look at the maximum point given to your uh, I mean, recommendation, it's 40%. And then your transcript of records, the assessment also weighs 60%. So, I mean, whether you get a scholarship or not get a scholarship could, could actually come from how the assessment criteria given here 
will be done on your application. Okay. Now, uh, I mean, this area actually specifies how much you're going to receive from, from the scholarship. Uh, so, I mean, this part actually depends on, I mean, whether you win the scholarship or not. So if you win it, you get this benefit uh, from the scholarship. Okay. So, uh, I mean, you can look at number four, for example, list of country and corresponding rates, mobility allowances, actually for these countries. Okay, these are the mobility allowances. I mean, if you're from this country, uh, how much you get, I mean, I mean, everything is stated here. Okay, so let's go to the application uh, procedure. Uh, with the application procedure, I mean, the first thing to go is to go to the, the IT, the ICT system. You can see that somewhere here, okay? ICT system login. Okay, so you can easily go to the ICT system login. After login, um, you have to first of all, create an account. First of all, create an account. So it's easier to create an account. So I have just created an account here. So I am, I will just go to edit my application and then, uh, I mean, you know, help you with the necessary procedure. So after creating an account in the NAWA, NAWA ICT system, you just fill in your details. So here, actually, it's the name of the applicant. It must be the same on the on the passport. Okay, so you check and then you, you enter your names here. Okay, your date of birth, your gender, your nationality, where you're coming from, which country, your, your date of birth must be placed here, your father's name and your mother's name. Then the passport, you provide a passport number, the passport expiry date, the country of issue, where the country was, you know, I mean, the country, you got your passport and the, the scan of the valid passport, the photo page, okay, the photo page is just one page. So just uh, upload that here, okay? You upload your photo, uh, the photo page of your passport in there. Then here is requesting for your current address. It's easy here. You provide your current address uh, and the contact, okay? Contact if necessary. That is the name and address of the person to be notified if necessary. So this, this area is just like emergency contact, the name of the person and the, the address and the telephone number of the person and the email address. So once you are done with this, I mean, you can go here or you can go to next because this is one out of five. This is uh, one out of five here, so you can go to next. So here, I mean, it is asking you of your education, your educational background. So where did you finish your undergraduate studies? So you can enter the country where you finish your undergraduate studies. Okay, you can easily enter it here. The name of the university you completed, the type of university, whether it is higher education institution or research organization, the city of the university, you enter it here. Then the field of study and area of study. Okay, the field of study and the area of study, you can enter it here. If the field of study is sciences, then what is the area of study? You can enter probably maybe in bracket. The area of study can be chemistry. Okay. Okay, so if it is exact uh, sciences, I mean, what is the area of study? It could be engineering. Engineering is the area of study, is the field of study. And uh, the area of study could be chemical engineering. Okay, good. 
Now the year of completion, the year of completion, you put it there. You can select it from here. Okay, select your date and put it there. The diploma you obtained, did you obtain a bachelor degree or is it an engineering degree? Uh, whatever it is, if it is bachelor, you can uh, put it there. Now here you're supposed to enter the grading scale of your university, for example, from one to 10 or one to 10, okay? So, I mean, if the grading scale, I mean, if you have the grading scale of your university, you put it there, then the average grade obtained during the first cycle studies. If you are currently a student of the last semester of first cycle studies, please enter the average grade for the current period of education. So if you have completed, you enter your average grade. If you have not completed university and you're in your final year of study, okay, that's the last semester. The last semester of your study, usually the second semester, final year, second semester. Okay, you enter the average grade you have obtained so far in the box here. Okay, so here actually gives you the opportunity to uh, scan and upload your diploma certificate. So uh, you should have the diploma certificate being, uh, you know, uploaded here. So for those who have completed university, you can easily upload your certificate here. For those in, who have not completed university and they are in their final, in the last semester of their final year, you need to read about the model certificate and how to provide the certificate. Okay. Now this session actually also gives you the opportunity to uh, uh, upload your transcript. Now, I mean here, you are being, you know, uh, assessed. I mean, your knowledge of Polish or English. So, I mean, here you are being asked of your mother tongue. What is your mother tongue? Your mother tongue can be English or it can be French or whatever language is your mother tongue. Now, in which language do you want to plan to study in Poland? Okay, so do you want to study in Poland Oh, I mean, on courses which are taught in Polish, you click Polish. If you want to be taught in English, you click English. Okay, so, I mean, here you have to prove the, your English proficiency. So, I mean, which English proficiency do you have? Do you have IELTS? Do you have, you know, certificate from the University of Cambridge. Okay, so whatever kind of uh, English proficiency you have, based on what is listed here, you, you, you upload a certificate. If it is other type of English proficiency certificate, you can just uh, upload them here. Okay, so here, uh, they want to know your previous educational or scientific stays in Poland or other countries. Okay, your previous education in other countries. It can be your home, home country. Uh, 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 it could be your home country. Then the duration of your study from when to when did you, I mean, study your bachelor degree? You can indicate it here. Well, I mean, here, they are looking at your source of funding. Who funded your education? For example, your bachelor education, who funded? Uh, it could be your parents. It could be, I mean, your uncle, or it could be self-funding. Maybe you funded yourself. So it could be self-funding, or it can be scholarship. Depending on your case, here, I mean, it talks about the practical or professional experience gained during an educational or scientific stage. So during your scientific, sorry, during your educational uh, studies, what kind of professional experience did you gain? You can enter everything in the box here. Your recommendation letter, very important to have a recommendation letter. 
So uh, here you are being asked, I want to attach to the application a letter of recommendation of the university or non-governmental organization. Okay, so if you have recommendation letters, which is actually important, you click yes. Then from which institution do you have a recommendation? Okay, from which institution? It could be institution from, I mean, recommendation letter drafted by a home university. Then you upload the scan copies over here. It could be, can be one copy, can be two copies. You upload them in here. So when you are done, you go to next. Then here, it is gives you, I mean, the chance to enter the field of study. Okay, in Poland, what field of study do you do you want to pursue? So maybe you want to pursue engineering and technical sciences, you want to pursue uh, agricultural sciences, or you want to pursue uh, exact and natural sciences. So your preferred university, the universities in Poland are listed here. Okay, so you can choose which university in Poland. Maybe uh, you want to choose this university. Then you are being asked, Plan start of studies. When do you want to pursue your, your field of study? Is it in win a winter or is it in summer? So depending on your choice, you choose it. Okay, then you can, uh, I mean, whilst doing this, it is important that uh, you can save, uh, you can be saving whatever your information you have typed. You can click on save to be saving it. So you don't lose information. So when you're done with this session, you can go to the next. Okay, so the next is about a declaration, right? So uh, you just declare. I, I declare that the time of submitting the application, blah, blah, blah. I mean, whatever information, you read it carefully. You can accept it. I think it's mandatory to uh, accept them. Okay, so you just read, then you declare whatever information there. Then you can easily go to the next. Okay, so I mean, the I mean here this area is is not uh, taken into account in the formal assessment or in the substantive assessment of your application. Here you are being asked. Uh, how did you hear about the program, uh, the Banak Scholarship Program? Where did you hear about it? It could be on social media, it could be on a website, depending on your case, it could be, could be from your uh, university, whatever. So you can select more than one uh, choices based on how you, you got to hear the, the Banak Scholarship Program. Okay, so, all right, so these are the information that you need you need to know in order to apply for the Banach Scholarship Program uh, for you to be selected to pursue your, your master's in, 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 in Poland, universities. Okay. All right. So this is that uh, for all. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel because you, you'll be receiving more information on how to apply for scholarship programs. I've already done so many videos that can help you to uh, apply for scholarships for master's degree, for PhD degree. You can go to my website and search for the various scholarship programs that you want to apply to. Thank you for watching.